because uh, you don't have kind of the built-in infrastructure and the and the knowledge uh, behind it. But as as we at our farm as kind of as we go along, we we're actually um, we find our scale, ourselves scaling down into kind of smaller technologies and more hand tools rather than what we're, where we thought we would be kind of growing our acreage and growing more and more and having bigger, more efficient tools, we actually find ourselves going in the other direction. Um, but part of that's because uh, we, we're, we're really lucky to have a, a good community around us that is willing to pay good, good money for good food. I would just add in that this is the point where I wish my coworker were here tonight, because uh, he's a total tool love. Um, and I know appropriate technology is in the name of our organization, and, and the truth is that um, a lot of the hand tools that do exist that make work easier um, are not necessarily being sold in this country. So when you go to Home Depot and you buy a garden hoe, uh, it's the exact same hoe that you would use to mix cement with. It's the same hoe in two different aisles. The, there are things out there um, that make our work easier and keep it at a hand level. Um, I'm curious if either of you two use a, a walk on hand tractor. Or if you, you use, you, your job is a, a full size somewhat for you? Yeah, um, well, I, I have one, but it's not, I wouldn't really, it's more of a, it's a BCS, but it's, uh, it's, it's not a good one. So it's, <laughs> it's not a walk on hand tractor, it's a rotator. <coughs> But I, I would enjoy using one of those. Yeah, we also have a walk behind small rototiller. We have high tunnel screen houses, and it's much more convenient to use that small machine in a greenhouse. Um, I was just interesting to hear Dan talk about downsizing because we've sort of done the same thing. We've, we've shrunk down actually and trying to do better on smaller cultivated acres. We also have a very appropriate technology, which is a 1952 Marmol Cub, which is, you, know, you, you can't really, you can find them around, but they don't make that anymore. And it's a cultivating tractor. It's a small, high-set cultivating tractor that's perfect. You know, it's 60 years old, but it, it was designed to do what it does, and it does it well. You all know the country that produces the most in agriculture in the world, right? U.S. Right. Oh, I don't, oh. But do, do y'all? That's out of our country. In case you were wondering, does anyone know the number two? I'm hearing Russia. I'm hearing China. Both of those are false. It's not Argentina. It's not Brazil. It's the Netherlands, actually. Um, and if you want to talk about small-scale intensive agriculture, right, at a relatively hand size. Um, and that's where you're going to be seeing walk behind tractors and small plots. It's all about what you two were just talking about. Right? It's downsizing, but getting the most out of your, your small piece of land. Um, and that's, that takes us down a very uh, completely different trend. Um, but I guess the reason why I'm bringing it up is it does bring back the idea that our massive monocropped fields are not necessarily as well but sees them. They're not more efficient. They're just lowering our dollar cost. And nutrition. And nutrition, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was struck in the film by the fact that kids don't come to the farm anymore and work. And I wondered if you all, if you either, either of you have to hire outside your families for work and or if there's some kind of community outreach or some ideas of how the concept of farming and the love of the land is spread back into the kids. I'll just say, uh, last year, um, I did, we, put, we were looking for some labor and we put out word uh, to the surrounding community or CSA members and stuff. Uh, we actually got a lot of young people contacting us, high school, mostly college age. Uh, so I feel like there's probably a resurgence there. Uh, and, uh, 
and I feel like we're still getting contacted by a lot of college age folks, um, more only and higher. Um, yeah, I was very, very fortunate about 14 months ago to sitting by the window one January day, and a gentleman called me and said he was at the farm and he was looking for work, and he's just the ideal farm manager for me now. He's a young guy who's uh, from Quebec, who has tremendous experience, uh, tremendous intelligence when it comes to farming and putting uh, full corn into practice. And so, uh, so we, we're, we've been very fortunate. We hire, we hire, we probably have, at the height of the season, seven or eight employees during the summer. Um, over the winter, we've had like one and a half. Hi, my name is David. Um, my question for you is, if I were to talk to my state legislator or my select person, what are the two or three things you would want me to say to that person? <laughs> Other than leave me alone. At the risk of being controversial, um, most agricultural people I know in the state who run a enterprise of any size really wish there were more immigrants around here because it's very difficult to get people to work on farms. It's not an accident that my new farm manager is from Quebec. Um, that is a, a totally different attitude towards work and, and responsibility and, and uh, I can't find those people around here. We, we used to do about six acres in concrete over at St. Paul School um, and it was uh, pretty much done by uh, a gentleman and his family who were refugees from Nepal. And regrettably, they moved to Ohio. And so we gave up that six acres because we just, we just can't deal with it. Um, so the labor shortage is, is real around here. Um, I, I think probably the biggest, uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know how much difference legislatures can make in farming in New Hampshire, but probably the biggest issue um, we, my wife and I faced was with health care. Uh, so it, uh, we could, we could just barely afford it before we had kids. But luckily, as we were having kids, the, the Affordable Care Act came into play and that allowed us to continue to have health insurance. Um, which, we're fairly young and healthy, so we don't need a lot of it, but farming is actually one of the more dangerous professions, so there's, there's a lot of, a lot of a lot of incidents of injury there, so uh, we're, we're glad to have that. Yeah. It took me a second to formulate what I wanted to say. I strongly believe that we need to have more money and time and training available to all kinds of entrepreneurs, um, and farmers especially. There needs to be more services out there to help people get into farming. There need to be more training centers out there to help entrepreneurs of all sorts. Uh, that's what brought us the middle class years, 100 years ago, and that's what will bring it back. Um, but right now, to become an entrepreneur, to find a land to start farming, um, to find the money to break into that business, um, 
I would 100% bolster that grassroots entrepreneur movement. Um, and here's the more controversial side, higher regulations on bigger businesses and make them pay what they need to be paying for the food that they are ripping out of their house. What you just said reminded me of something else, which is there are lots of grants out there, and you know, for USDA grants for this, that, and the other thing. When you look into it, it it's it's a grant. They're like they're grants for um, feasibility studies. They're grants that you are prohibited from using a grant to actually buy some equipment, for God's sake, which is you know uh, what what most of us would want to actually build up some infrastructure or you know maybe a new piece of equipment or do something those grants aren't out there it's all feasibility studies and and sort of uh, stuff that a farm like myself wouldn't be much interested in and when they do offer equipment it comes with strings attached and you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to report this i i'm with you completely Um, I just wanted to add to that also uh, that there's a bill called HB 1233. You can learn more about this on Nova New Hampshire's website. Um, it's to regulate seeds and fertilizers, and it will potentially take regulation away from municipalities and bring it to the state level. So if you would like to learn more about this, you can ask me about it after. Are there any questions? Additional questions? Sorry, I have lots of questions, but probably not enough time. Um, my other question is about the idea of being placed. Um, I think that's very hard. So I'm just some background. I'm 23. I just graduated from college last year. Um, and I feel this um, urging around me and a lot of my peers to go and find jobs where their best and not necessarily come back home. Um, I actually came home, I'm working for my parents um, at Markland Candle in Pintuva, and I've learned a lot coming home and working for them. Um, but it's also been difficult and there is this urge to go and travel and to see things, but in actually farming it and having a garden, it's the opposite of being placeless. You have to be placed and that's what I'm realizing in taking care of animals and such. You can't just go away and say, oh, well, I'll worry about the crops later, and then come back and squash bugs have taken over, and um, it's a mess. And so how do you, like, there are obviously things that you've had to give up in being a farmer. And how do you, um, I guess, I'm not quite sure what my question is, I'm realizing now, but how do you deal with that and this sense of being um, placed in a certain place and having to be with the people around you and you can't just leave when things are hard um, and you have to be there through good and bad and I'm sure that you have moments where you're like I wish I could travel and I wish I could go other places but how do you deal with that sorry there's a lot wrapped up in there but but it's a great one no, yeah yeah I think that kind of encapsulates the film that we just watched in terms of having a sense of place so place you're moving your hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I had, farming was not my first career, so I mean, I had, um, I worked for the state, I was a lawyer, I did various things, and so when I gave up my day job, as I used to call it, I, you know, my wife and I did some, some traveling at that time extensively, and, and so we, I guess we got it out of our system. If, if you really want to be a farmer, you know, I've had some girls work for me who were woofers, and you know, they, you know, a summer in Spain and Italy didn't sound too bad. Working on <laughs> on organic farms, that sounds pretty good, you know. Um, so there's always those sort of options. But the truth is, you know, what I guess I got it out of my system. Um, I'm doing what I really want to do. I don't feel the need to leave, and I'm one of those people who is like, you know, if we go to Europe for three weeks, you know. What's the cat going to do? You know? <laughs> and so we, we don't go at this point. <laughs> <laughs> my, 
my wife and I, our greatest dream right now is to be homesteading. We are actively looking for land, and if anyone out there in the audience knows of a piece of land within commuting distance to Keene, New Hampshire, please let me know. Um, she's also from Germany uh, and moved to the United States to be with me. This sense of place question is one of the most powerful ones in our relationship. And knowing that we can afford to buy land here in the United States, but we can't afford to buy land in Germany or anywhere in Europe for that matter, uh, is a pretty deciding factor on where our place is going to be. Um, couple that with a, a strong belief that I hold that you grow where you're planted. Um, we don't always get to choose. My wife and I, for many reasons, many of them even political, many of them familial, um, would probably rather be in Germany. But if we're going to be following our dream, we're going to be here. And farming is, these two will tell you more than I can, it's much more than just a job. Right? It is a bit of a dream. Um, and that's why we're going to try and find the best we can here, and then we're going to make it happen. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a right answer there. Uh, I, I would love to do more traveling, <laughs> but um, I, that, that looks like it's, it's a ways off, you know, especially when we have some young kids. So, um, so they'll tie you down too. Uh, I, I will say we, um, when my wife and I were looking for a place to farm some, some land to buy to start a farm. We were kind of looking all over northern New England. We went to uh, all over Vermont and Maine and different parts of New Hampshire. And luckily, <clears throat> we didn't really plan this, but if we hadn't ended up where we did, I don't think we'd still be farming because. Uh, we ended up uh, within within a short dis distance of both of our both sets of our parents, and uh, so we just we we couldn't have we couldn't have done that we couldn't have, we couldn't have made it work I don't think. Um, we also were we're very fortunate to have a really supportive community in our in the town we're in. Um, but yeah, it, it helps to have uh, family, or I guess at least good friends nearby. Thank you all. Do we have any other questions? Yeah? This is my husband. 